Good morning. I would like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation and the possibility to do my talk not the way I would like being present in Lugano, but the way it is possible under the circumstances. I have no conflicts of interest. As we all know, the epidemiology of human mold infection is changing. However, aspergillus are still the leading cause of these infections in men. And among the numerous aspergillus, members of the complex of aspergillus niger, terius, flavus, and particularly aspergillus fumigatus are the most frequently isolate. The spectrum of the disease caused by aspergillus are numerous, most of them related with the respiratory system, affecting mainly immunocompetent patients and in some, like chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, a lung stru ultra structural disease is behind this pathology. However, the most threatened form of the disease is <coughs> invasive aspergillosis with an incidence of more than 200,000 cases each year. This number may be represent only half the real number because of the low sensitivity of culture in these patients. It affects mainly immunocompromised patients and it has a high mortality with a wide range between 30 and 90 percent related with the time and severity of immunodepressions in these patients. With the advent of triazoles for prevention and treatment of acute and chronic aspergillosis, it was thought these numbers of mortality will decrease. However, the first report of azole-resistant aspergillus fumigatus in 1997 and its stead increase with worldwide reports over the 2000s brought the global concern with this issue because it is related with therapeutic failures. The frequency of this resistance varies considerably in between countries, between hospitals in the same country, between departments in the same hospital, and is related with risk groups of patients. Also, the prevalence of this azole acquired resistant in aspergillus show a wide 
range of frequency between 0.5 and 30 percent related with the not done of antifungal susceptibility testing in the non-invasive situations. Here I show a world map with the global epidemiology of azole resistance frequency in clinical and environment aspergillus isolates. The environmental isolates are shown in the green color and the clinical isolates in the other colors. The data we obtained in the research we conducted in the north of Portugal reveal a value of 4.2% with is in accordance the values here presented. And how this resistant selection is done. Two main routes have been proposed, the patient route and the environmental route. This one related with the pressure that fungicide azoles do when used in the agriculture. Here I present some characteristics of these two roots, the type of the disease, the therapy and the resistance mechanisms involved in the two of the roots. However, recent studies point to an interchange between the two roots, so the limits are not so straightforward. In this slide, I present a simple diagram of the ergosterol synthesis and show the main target of azoles, the 14-alpha dimethylase, a CYP51 protein, and the mechanisms of resistance that I will talk about in the next slides are mainly related with this enzyme and its gene. One of the most studied and reported mechanisms of resistance are the tandem repeat. They, they are non-synonymous mutation associated or not with amino acid substitution that induce overexpression of the gene, overexpression of the target enzyme and the necessity of an increased drug concentration to inhibit the fungal growth. They present a phenotype of panazole resistance. Three tandem repeats has already been uh, reported. The TR 34, 
associated with one amino acid substitution, the TR46 associated with two amino acid substitution that induce a high resistance in voriconazole and the TR53 with no amino acid substitution and that induce high resistance in itraconazole and voriconazole. Other mechanisms are the single point mutation that reduce the susceptibility to azoles with different patterns. Here I show the point mutations already reported and the influence they induce in the different azoles, one of them only in one azole, others in two or three azoles. Besides the single point mutations, combinations of point mutations have already been reported and some of them are shown in this slide. In this table I depict the eight the results we obtained in our research in eight patients who showed a phenotype of azol resistance. We studied the CYP mutations in these patients and we found two of them with the tandem repeat 34, one with the tandem repeat 46, three others with combinations of point mutations. In two other patients, we didn't find any resistance mechanism related with the CYP51 protein. In this world map, I show the worldwide distribution of azole resistance mechanisms that I talk about distributed in several countries. And now, in accordance with our data, we can head to the map in the north of Portugal, the dots green and blue. In this slide, I show a list of other molecular mechanisms independent of CYP51 protein that have been recently reported and whose frequency and relevance are currently under assessment. Beside the Aspergillus fumigatus, other resistance mechanism had, has been studied in different Aspergillus. In this slide, I show the point mutations recently reported for Aspergillus flavus and its CYP151A protein 
and all of them induce a reduced susceptibility in voriconazole. For Aspergillus niger, also some point mutation has been reported. Single point mutation that related with itraconazole and combination of point mutations that affect itra and voriconazole. For the Aspergillus tubigensis, a cryptic species of the Niger complex, also some point mutation and associated combination of point mutations has already been reported. In what Aspergillus terios concern, and so far only one point mutation has been reported. For Aspergillus flavus, and regarding its B and C CYP proteins, also point mutations and has been reported. They all reduce the susceptibility to voriconazole. And what can we do to revert this problem? In the clinical setting, we should implement national and international resistant surveillance programs to find reliable and rapid diagnostic tests, to try to develop new drugs and evidence new targets in therapeutic strategy and to increase our awareness to understand the mechanisms of triazole resistant selection in the environment. Regarding the environmental setting, we should try to use fungicide formulations without azole molecules combine molecules that induce less resistance, use new adsorption process, and ideally, but probably impossible, to discontinue the use of azole fungicides in the environment. I leave here the other members who conduct the research in north of Portugal. I say thank you, leaving you with a photo of Porto, my home city, that I hope one day you may visit. Have a nice day and thank you again for your attention.